a sample thermodynamics problem. So what we're going to do in this uh, video is a couple of different things. First, we'll talk about the heat capacity for an ideal gas, different forms of heat capacity. We'll talk about that. And then we'll go through an example thermodynamics problem where we work with the first law as well as the ideal gas law. So let's talk about heat capacity. So you know when we did solids and liquids we used this. We said you want to change the temperature by a certain amount. How much heat does that involve? Well that's given by Q equals MC delta T. And this thing C depends on the material. So we do something similar for gases. You can say Q is some measure of the amount of stuff you have, but instead of M, we're going to use N, the number of moles. And then we multiply that by capital C, not the specific heat, but the heat capacity, and then delta T. And the neat thing is that this depends on the process. So there is a heat capacity for whatever process you're doing. Now, if you have a monotonic ideal gas, let's look at the constant volume process. So then you have Q is NCV delta T and of course there's no work being done in the constant volume process so uh, the Q is just going to change the internal energy. Now what we know there is that for a monatomic ideal gas CV can be replaced by 3 halves R. CV is 3 halves R. That's interesting because R is just the gas constant, then you multiply it by 3 halves, that's your CV. So unlike little c, the specific heat, which changes if you go from, say, one material to another, aluminum to brass or copper or whatever, different C values, this version of the equation, as long as you have a monatomic ideal gas, it doesn't matter what kind of gas it is, right? So it could be different element, doesn't matter. You get the same result, NCV delta T. Okay, so work is zero, remember, for the constant volume process, so Q has changed internal energy. All right, so that's what it is for monatomic ideal gas for constant volume. Well, what if you did a constant pressure process? Well, in that case, you would say it's N, not CV, which is the heat capacity constant volume, but CP, the heat capacity constant pressure. And it turns out the CP value is 5 halves of R, and you can derive that from the first law, Q is W plus changed internal energy, you get 3 halves NRT from the NR delta T, that is, from the changed internal energy, and the work gives you another NR delta T. That's why you end up with 5 halves. Now, in general, what happens is that heat capacity constant pressure is the heat capacity constant volume plus R. This is true whether you're talking about monatomic ideal gases, diatomic ideal gases, whatever. And also, in general, the change in internal energy is NCV delta T. Now this is very important. It really looks like that's an equation that only works at for constant volume processes. Okay? If you're working out the Q, the Q, you need to know what the process is. But the change in internal energy is process independent. It only depends on temperature. So if you know you have this equation that works for the change in internal energy for one process, then it applies to all processes because the change in internal energy is not dependent on the process. The Q is, the work is, but the change in internal energy is not. Okay, so that's good to keep in mind. We can always use that equation as our change in internal energy equation, no matter what the process is. Okay, so let's consider this example problem. We've got a container of monatomic ideal gas. Uh, we happen to choose NR, so NR is 20 joules per Kelvin. The gas in state 1 has a pressure of 20 kilopascals and a volume of 100 times 10 to the minus 3 cubic meters. Well, what's the temperature? Well, we can just use the ideal gas law. We have all the pieces, so we say PV equals NRT, so T is simply PV over NR. Numbers work out nicely. Uh, note the 20,000 kilopascals times 100 times 10 to the minus 3. The factor of 1,000 in the kilopascals cancels the 10 to the minus 3 in the volume. So we just have 20 times 100, 2,000 over 20 joules per Kelvin. We're at 100 Kelvin. 
Now, what else do we do? Well, we're going to add 2,500 joules of heat to the gas. The gas expands, reaches a new state, and it expands at constant pressure. Okay, so what's the final temperature? So, at constant pressure, we know that we can apply the Q is changed internal energy plus W equation. We can use 3 halves nR delta T for a monatomic ideal gas change internal energy expression, even though we're doing constant pressure. Okay, that applies all the time. And then plus nR delta T, that's the, what the work is equal to. Work is V delta V for constant pressure, and V delta V is, from the ideal gas law, nR delta T. Okay, so that ends up as 5 halves nR delta T. Delta T is, uh, just rearrange that, 2 fifths of Q over nR, Q is 1,000, no, 2 fifths of Q is 1,000 and then nr is 20 so the delta t is 50 but we started at 100 so now we're up to 150 kelvin all right carry on now we do how much work is done by the gas during that expansion well that was part of our q expression right so constant pressure we know work is p delta v again you can replace P delta V because the ideal gas law by NR delta T. You can really only get away with that because only one thing is changing on the left-hand side. And so that's 20 joules per Kelvin and plus 50 Kelvin is 1,000 joules. Now remember, you can only use work as P delta V for the constant pressure process. In general, we have to say work is the area under the curve on the PV diagram for that particular um, transition from one state to another for that particular process. Okay, now finally let's do D. After the expression, what's the final volume? And here we could just use the ideal gas law again, right? So we could say V2 is NRT2, we know what T2 is, 150 Kelvin, and how do we know P2 is 20 times 10 to the third Pascals? Well, it's a constant pressure process, so P2 is equal to P1. Okay, so we end up with 150 times 10 to the minus 3 meter cubed instead of 100 times 10 to the minus 3 meters cubed. That's because our temperature has gone up by 50%, pressure stayed the same, our volume has to go up by 50% as well. Okay, so there is an example of how you use the ideal gas law and the first law of thermodynamics to solve some things.